Well, I suspect this is why they're nervous, because this is the type of information that would come out as a result of a transparency initiative by President Trump. Ner just to clarify, nervous about damage to their own reputation, you're saying? Well, and, and worse, uh, look, if you're misusing your office for political purposes as government officials uh, in the real world or uh, the non-Washington, D.C. world, you'd be subject to right. prosecution. No, that's a, that's a, thank you for reminding us of that. Um, these are crimes, some of these things that are being alleged. Tom Fitton, as always, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Amazingly, our week is over. 15 nights in a row, we brought you the latest on the Kavanaugh saga, and it may come to an end tomorrow afternoon. Obviously, Fox will be on that. We'll be back Monday to, as we always do, fight lying, pomposity, smugness, and groupthink. By the way, if you want to help us knock Bob Woodward off the top of the bestseller list, be sure to check out a book called Ship of Fools. It's on shipoffoolsbook.com and grab a copy. That would be a statement, wouldn't it? Maybe a statement worth sending. Thanks again for a great week. We're looking forward to seeing you on Monday. Guess who's next? You know the answer, Sean Hannity. We're going to turn it over to him. Have a great weekend. Judge Brett Kavanaugh's spot on the Supreme Court appears to be secure. Collins, Flake, and Democrat Joe Manchin all voted yes. Republican Lisa Murkowski joined with Democrats to vote no. I will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. I could not conclude that he is the right person for the court at this time. The United States Senate will also be making a state whether the state that partisan politics can override the presumption of innocence or we'll reaffirm that in the United States of America everyone is innocent until proven guilty there's two choices the Susan Collins way or the protester way who do you want to run the government this man has been mistreated this man has been subjected to a set of procedures that were designed to trip him up 14 men arrested at the Supreme Court is a crowd cheered them on. The mob was not able to intimidate the Senate. We stood up to the mob. We did the right thing for a good man. Good Saturday morning. We start with a Fox News alert. Confirmation confirmed. Senator Susan Collins all but seals the deal for soon to be Supreme Court Justice. Brett Kopp, as the Senate heads to a final floor vote today, later on this afternoon. Big day yesterday, you two. We got Rachel and Griff here this morning. Uh, it was a, it was historic, truly. It really was. It was a historic day, and Senator Collins, who sometimes isn't the favorite of the Republican base, was the hero yesterday. <laughs> yes, she is. And so, as a reporter in Washington, I joke that Susan Collins is always on the fence about an issue here and there. But I will tell you this. Mark my words. The words of Senator Collins on the floor yesterday will be referred to uh, in the near future time and time again for the stance she took on the principle of the presumption of innocence. Here's a little bit of what Senator Collins said yesterday. Take a listen. 
Judge Kavanaugh has received rave reviews for his 12-year track record as a judge. In evaluating any given claim of misconduct, we will be ill-served in the long run if we abandon the presumption of innocence and fairness. I listened carefully to Christine Blasey Ford's testimony before the Judiciary Committee. I found her testimony to be sincere, painful, and compelling. To that leaker, who I hope is listening now, let me say that what you did was unconscionable. And you have sacrificed her well-being in a misguided attempt to win whatever political crusade you think you are fighting. I do not believe that these charges can fairly prevent Judge Kavanaugh from serving on the court. Mr. President, I will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. It was compelling. In fact, the whole country was waiting to see what Susan Collins would say at three o'clock. And I never thought I would say this, but Susan Collins single-handedly eviscerated the left and the way they have abused this process against a good man. Right. I think the dirty tricks are really what sunk this for the Democrats yes. in so many ways. But she did walk a really fine line, Griff, didn't she? I mean, she she really showed empathy, not just for um, Dr. Ford, but also she talked a lot towards the end of the speech about other women that have come up to her and mm -hmm. and revealed you know, secrets that they had never told before. So there was a clear empathy for that yes. and for the Me Too movement. And yet she said, um, I, I, I have to take the, this vote because of the presumption of innocence that she said. That's exactly right. You know, in my analysis as a reporter here, so I don't give opinions, but my analysis is that Senator Collins rose above Brett Kavanaugh. And when she says that when passions are most inflamed, that fairness is most in jeopardy, those are powerful words. Mm. And it will be applied to the next uh, uh, several nominations for any political office, for men and women who are qualified to serve, but yet are facing allegations uncorroborated like we just saw in and, this process. And she was able to rise above Brett Kavanaugh because he's so eminently qualified. At the end of the day, you step back and say, this guy's qualified for the court. Another big hero of this moment. Mm. Senator Mitch McConnell. <laughs> That's true. We'll yes, talk yes. more about this, winners and losers on this program. It's going to be a fun morning. I like victory dance. And I've had critical words about Senator Mitch McConnell in the past, but he stood up strongly on the Senate floor yesterday, and he said the mob will not intimidate. The mob was not able to intimidate the Senate. We stood up to the mob. We did the right thing for a good man. I filled a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court. There's a lot to celebrate today. I couldn't be prouder of all of my members. That was actually Laura Ingram's show. But he said the same thing on the Senate floor. Yeah, he said we're not going to be intimidated. And that's what made what Senator Collins did. I mean, she was facing a lot of pressure from, from the mob. Can I just say one thing that was a little bit, as a conservative woman, I... I I quibbled a little bit with what with what happened. You know, she laid out the case for Brett Kavanaugh, his qualifications, but also sh her assurances that he would not overturn Roe v. Wade. And I, I was a little bit peeved because it seems like when it comes to conservatives, you can't have a litmus test on on uh, on Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you're pro-choice, you always seem to that that seems perfectly fine. That's a good point. That. But let's but not let's. I let's, know. I know. I know. No, no, I you're, you're right. No, you're no, no, actually, I'm agreeing <laughs> with you. Let's not miss the historic moment of this. This is will be today when the vote happens. The first solid, more or less solid five to four conservative majority in the Supreme Court. I've certainly seen in my lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. That's a win for the Second Amendment. That's a win for free speech. That's a win for religious freedom. And that's a win for unborn babies. It, I don't yeah, know we, how that plays out. I agree. Big guys, win for conservatives who voted for this president because they believed he could do this from Neil Gorsuch. To, to now Brett Kavanaugh. And that's why the mob is mad, by the that, way. Well, they Absolutely. are mad, and that's the whole thing. I spent all week covering the protesters. I'm in contact with them. The leader of the Women's March, Linda Sarsour. Were you intimidated? I was not intimidated. <laughs> I scared them down. But, but, but they're not stopping. They're already yeah. going after Susan Collins. They're going after Mitch McConnell. Hmm. They're going after uh, uh, President Trump. In fact, here, here's, here's a, we had a tweet, tweet, I think, yeah. here. This is the Women's March. This is who Senator Collins is. Rape apologists. It's it's unbelievable. 
it's not when you know the depth of, of the, the left and what they're willing to do. See, not only did Trump win, the Democrats may have just lost the midterm. I mean, this is a gut punch to the left. They brought everything and the kitchen sink. They're still going to bring it, by the way. They are. They're going to try to impeach Brett Kavanaugh if they were to win in the midterm. We're going to yes. see today. We're going to see in just a matter of hours the same protesters that were in the Hart Senate uh, building in that atrium. They're going to be there again yeah. today. They're, they're, they're texting me all last night saying we're going to be out there. We're going to get arrested again. But it's going to be good. It's good. It's, it's going to be Nadler. Fill it up. It's fill those jails up. Get arrested. <laughs> Love it. Have fun. It, well, Jerry Nadler in the House of Representatives, he he if. If the House is taken over by the Democrats, he will become the judiciary chairman. Um, he says that he is going to pursue an investigation into Kavanaugh, which is weird because well, let's do the, it again. The, the House doesn't have advice and consent on the Supreme Court. He has to, this guy needs to read the Constitution. Well, most um, of them haven't. That's why they're on the left. Anyway, Jared Nadler had this to say, to your point. Or no, is it, Yeah. The Senate, having failed to do its proper constitutionally mandated job of advising consent, we're going to have to do something to provide a check and balance to protect the rule of law and protect the legitimacy of one of our most important institutions. Again, read the Constitution. It is the job of the Senate. They will have done their job today. So, and it, this is another case that, of the left great, not accepting the results of an election and now of potentially a That is a great point. The job of the Senate is to advise and consent as laid out in the Constitution. Yes. And that is what Collins is saying. That was the function that they served. And Collins says, I have reviewed the judicial record of, uh, of, of Brett Kavanaugh and found nothing but a stellar record. Yep. I have reviewed the FBI report and found nothing that corroborates the allegations of sexual misconduct, and therefore I support this nomination. This specifically is an enormous problem for Lisa Murkowski. Yeah. So Ma Michelle Malkin actually is now saying, gear up, conservatives, because mm -hmm. this thing is just getting started. Here she is last night. I think that the Senate... Democrat wrecking machine is not going to give up after Judge Kavanaugh is uh, nominated and approved tomorrow. They're going to go on all the way through the midterms and 2020. And I think it behooves the right and the conservative movement, Laura, to make sure that we don't leave a vacuum in these spaces. No time to get complacent at all. That usually when you win is the moment you let your guard down. This will, I think the Kavanaugh effect, though, still permanent still important for Republicans who saw what the left would do if they get power. Absolutely. They will turn the, the Washington, D.C. into a zoo. They'll yell about the rule of law and circumvent rule of law in the process. Later on in the show, Griff, you and I have disagreed a little bit about Mitch McConnell, but I've got a gift for you in the 7 o'clock <laughs> hour. As it pertains to Mitch McConnell, because the guy came through big time. You he has to delivered give him time that. and time again. Absolutely. He, he kept his caucus together, so a big day. All right, well, moving on as well. The Trump administration celebrating a huge political victory. Senators are expected to confirm Judge Brett Kavanaugh today as the president hits the road for a rally in Kansas. And Kevin Cork is live in our nation's capital with reaction from the White House. Kevin, what do they have to say? Well, good morning, guys. Cautious optimism is certainly the order of the day. Assuming no last-minute defections, Judge Kavanaugh will be confirmed for the Supreme Court later this afternoon. Let me take you to Twitter and share just a bit of what the White House was saying about it. The president saying he was very proud of the U.S. Senate for voting yes to advance the nomination of Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Interesting personal note from Sarah Sanders. She was also on Twitter. She said, thank you, Senator Collins, for standing by your convictions and doing the right thing to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. Of course, this following yesterday's dramatic speech by the Maine GOP senator in defense of Kavanaugh's bid and amid ferocious opposition on the Hill, as you heard Griff mention there. In fact, it was something that South Carolina GOP Senator Lindsey Graham noted last night. If you think you can change your mind by yelling at her and showing up at her house, you're dead wrong. Again, I just want to compliment her for stopping what I thought was the closest thing to McCarthyism in my lifetime that a man is guilty and to prove an innocent, facts don't matter. Smearing him uh, equates to him being disqualified. She yeah. stood pretty tall. The best thing is Okay, as for the key votes on Capitol Hill, as you see there, Flake presumed will be a yes. Murkowski, interesting, she's going to say no, but she wants to go down in the record book as simply saying present. Collins, a yes. And Joe Manchin out of the great state of West Virginia, also a yes. All eyes on the clock in the Hill as we await the president. 
and perhaps his notes on Twitter as we wait for that confirmation vote. And as you mentioned, the president's actually going to be in the Sunflower State tonight. That should be a raucous event. Of course, I'll have all the details, but for now, back to you. I didn't know Kansas is the Sunflower State. I didn't know yeah, that either. I didn't know that either, Kevin. Kevin Good educates stuff. us every day. Every day. Well done, Mr. Cork. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cork. I you will bet. say this. Uh, Lindsey Graham there, another another face of someone who comes out a huge winner. And we're going to break, break it down, winners and losers, because there's a lot of interesting ones. But that guy, yeah. what he did in the committee... Uh, re-introduced re, um, himself to a lot of conservatives who had been yeah. frustrated with him for a while. But that is the spirit of Lindsey Graham. He, he, in big moments, he oftentimes steps But that's up. kind of the spirit of the GOP. I mean, you see a lot more independent voices. You, the Democrats tend to vote in block. Very rarely, unless you have a Joe Manchin who's in a really tough race, do they ever break yeah. from, their, from their group. Um, this was a moment where you can see that the dirty tricks played in the Senate in this process really united the, not just the party, but specifically the members of the Senate who tend to be kind of dysfunctional sometimes. <laughs> yeah. When you overplay so. your hand, karma can be a, you know. Let's not say. <laughs> All right. Now, did, did the presidents just ruin their chances to take back the House and even the Senate? We'll break down how today's outcome may impact the polls next. Plus, the media already melting down. So will it ever stop? Diamond and Silk are here live this hour. Two out of nine sitting justices have been credibly accused of sexual, of sexual misconduct and then go on to be confirmed anyway. As the nation awaits today's historic vote on Judge Brett Kavanaugh, many now looking to the vote's impact on the upcoming midterm elections. A new poll revealing the Democrats' advantage on voter enthusiasm. Those who say midterms are, quote, very important, dropping from a 10-point lead back in July to just two points today, a statistical tie. Here to react is former pollster for the Trump campaign, Jim McLaughlin. Jim, good morning. Good Happy morning to you. What a day. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Never everybody stops. <laughs> everybody wants to know what's going to be the impact, do you think, uh, of what we've just gone through, what we've all witnessed on the midterms? I've been seeing polling over the last week, a couple weeks ago, things were not looking good for Republicans. But over the last week, you've seen Republicans coalescing around Republican candidates at the national level and also in the local races. But the other thing you're seeing, especially in a lot of these swing Senate seats, like in Missouri and West Virginia, you're seeing these right of center independents coming home for Republicans. And a lot of that has to do with what's going on. And, you know, folks have termed it the Kavanaugh effect. 
Let's talk about uh, West Virginia for a moment, and that is, of course, Senator uh, Joe Manchin. He is a yes. He is going to vote. He will be credited, rightfully so, as being part of, of getting Kavanaugh across the finish line. What, what, what happens there? It was all about political survival for him. I really believe because he voted for Obamacare, he voted against the Trump tax cuts. So Pat Morrissey, who's a really good candidate in West Virginia, was making the point that whenever Chuck Schumer needs him, he goes with the Washington liberals. He goes with Chuck Schumer and he goes with Nancy Pelosi. I think it would have been three strikes if you're out, if you voted for Brett Kavanaugh, because he supported overwhelmingly in West Virginia. And I still think, even though he voted yes, polls still show him under 50 percent. Mm -hmm. When you're Joe Manchin, you're under 50 percent, you're in trouble there because the vast majority of those undecided voters they're going to go for Pat Morrissey, the challenger. What, Jim, does this do to the president? I mean, people forget, you know, the president campaigned uh, in 2016 to put conservative judges on uh, the court. And now it looks like if the vote holds, that will become true for a second time. What does this do to the president's uh, job approval? It's another example of promises made, promises kept. And oh, by the way, Rasmussen's daily tracking shows the president at a 51 percent job approval rating up. That's up several points from where it's been over the last few months. So the fact that you see it, the, the White House is actually gaining dividends off of this because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, most Americans, they agree with the judicial philosophy of Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Jim, let's look at these Democrats. Now, these are Democrats seeking re-election uh, in Trump states. Joe Donnelly in Indiana, Jim Nelson in Florida, Debbie Stabenow in Michigan, McCaskill in Missouri, Tester Montana, Heidkamp in North Dakota, Sherrod Brown in Ohio, Casey yeah. uh, in Pennsylvania, Manchin in West Virginia, and Timmy Baldwin in Wisconsin. What's this mean for, for all of those Democrats? The states where Donald Trump did better, those are the states where this is going to have the most impact. And like I said, before, you know, the, the, the Kavanaugh hearings, I think a lot of it is just the Democrats went too far. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of voters are seeing, again, not just the Republican base, but independents and even those Trump Democrats. Remember, Donald Trump got about 11 percent of the Democratic right. vote last time. So they're looking at this. They're seeing the radicalization of the Democratic Party and they don't like it. Those pictures of the protests and all the other and the violence and those things that are going on, that's turning off mainstream America. And Heidi Heitkamp, I want to focus just very quickly on her because uh, she obviously was a, uh, a possible red state Democrat that could have come along with Joe Manchin. What's this going to do to her? She's done. I think the reason why she's doing this, because she's worried about her political future. Um, you know, we did a poll over the uh, a few months back where she was down double digits. Fox News poll had her down double digits. I think she's looking to get in the dem next Democratic uh, presidential administration, and she's trying to dust off her uh, liberal resume for Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Jim McLaughlin, thank you very much. It's going to be very fascinating to watch. We're very close. To November 6th. We shall see what happens. Thank you. All right. Senator Susan Collins being attacked by the left. Some even saying she should be voted out of office for voting what she believes. So is there a double standard here? We'll discuss it. Plus, Diamond and Silver are here live. Their thoughts. Good morning, ladies. We want to find out what they think. I bet they've got some opinions.
Good Saturday morning. Some quick headlines for you. A murder suspect is behind bars after an intense seven-day manhunt. Police finding Kirby Wallace in the woods north of Nashville, Tennessee. Wallace peacefully surrendered. He is accused of a deadly home invasion and shooting a man to death. And a white Chicago police officer is convicted in the killing of a black teenager. A jury finding Jason Van Dyke guilty of secondary murder and 16 counts of aggravated battery. He shot and killed 17-year-old Laquan McDonald in 2014. Van Dyke will be sentenced later this month. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo arriving in Tokyo overnight for a meeting with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the U.S. diplomat stopping in Japan just hours before heading to North Korea. Pompeo will wrap up his East Asia tour with stops in South Korea and China. Pete, Rachel. Thank you, Griff. Well, Republican Senator Susan Collins is make, making an impassioned 43-minute speech on the Senate floor on why she decided to vote for Judge Kavanaugh. Collins defending powerfully the presumption of innocence and shutting down the notion that pro-Kavanaugh voters are being dismissive of women. So here to react, former acting director of the Office on Violence Against Women at the Justice Department, Andrea Botner. Welcome, Andrea. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning to you. So you say that she was courageous, that Senator College Collins was very courageous. Tell us why you admire that courage. Oh. I was so proud of her yesterday because she is one of the most thoughtful and um, well-reasoned and bipartisan working senators who's been representing Maine for over 20 years. And yesterday when she made that speech, I think she did Maine proud. And as a woman, I was just so thrilled to hear her uh, lay out her case and, and draw her own conclusion. Andrea, you know, this, she will vote. Sometimes we get frustrated with, with it, but the Senate is about process. They have rules, uh, and they've, they, it's always been a part of that institution. It almost felt like she was defending the process of the Senate as much as she was defending Kavanaugh, who's utterly uh, defensively highly qualified. So she did a lot for the institution yesterday as well. She sure did. She brought respect back to the Senate. And yesterday, I really believe she chose the law. She valued the presumption of innocence over politics. Absolutely. What, there was a, 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 a lot of attacks on her as a woman. <laughs> um, and there was something that I read, and I, I just wanted to share with you. Eve Ensler wrote a letter on Time.com, and she said, white women who support Brett Kavanaugh, she says, are choosing their sons over their daughters. What do you think about that? I that is absolutely disgusting. And I, I have one of each. And I tell you, no woman, no mother wants to be accused of choosing a son over a daughter or a daughter over a son. And again, we're just right back in that gender politics. If you're a woman, yeah. you have to think one way. If you're a man, you think another. I don't buy into that. I don't think most of America does either. No, well said. She shut that down also. Well, protesters, they didn't stop. They laid into her uh, for the vote. Listen. Don't put a liar on the court. Don't put a liar on the court. Don't put a liar on the court. Susan Collins just made a huge choice to ignore her constituents and um, survivors. You know, it was Lindsey Graham, it was Orrin Hatch, it was Mitch McConnell, and then Susan Collins ultimately staring down these protesters who think, if we yell loudly enough, we will get our way. I mean, that's just incredible. It's mob rule. And that is not what we... That is not what our country is about, and that's not why we were founded and how we've um, proceeded with our justice system and our culture for the last several, several decades. It's just not right, and we need to stand up and support women like Susan Collins and be courageous enough in our own lives to make our own decisions. Well, we think she's going to stand up today, we believe, uh, and cast one of the deciding votes 
uh, 5 or 6 p.m. tonight is when the actual confirmation vote will happen. Andrea Botner, thank you very much for your time. We thank you. Thank it. you. You got thank it. Thank you. All right, coming up, Senator Sarah Palin. Well, the former governor's warning shot for 2022. We'll bring it to you. Plus, as the world watches Kavanaugh's confirmation battle, a new poll shows enthusiasm among women voters is on the rise. Why? We're going to ask Diamond and Silk live next. Stay with us. Oh, they're here. They're here. Justice Thomas and Brett Kavanaugh on the mm. Supreme Court, or likely will have both of them. That is two out of nine sitting justices have been credibly accused of sexual, of sexual misconduct and then go on to be confirmed anyway. So I do think that the question is not whether or not they're going to be nice to him, but whether or not the other justices are possibly going to change their voting behavior in response. The court is not on the level <clears throat> after today. Americans ought not have faith in their Supreme Court. The founding fathers set it up that way. You know, they warned us about factions. They would be very upset with seeing the way the Supreme Court now has been yeah. factionalized. Uh, that was some of the uh, media outrage yesterday. Although uh, Tara is fantastic. This is a live shot of the Senate floor. 
uh, as they currently are undergoing 30 hours of debate. You know, the cloture vote meant debate will be limited, so no one can filibuster. 30 hours ends up at 4.52 p.m. tonight. So apparently overnight, and while you were all sleeping and not listening because the vote already happened, uh, senators have been talking about, you guessed it, Brett Kavanaugh all night long. Yeah, and, you know, this is the highlight of, of this tired week of uh, protesters and, and all these senators. The highlight of C-SPAN. But we have Diamond and Silk yes, right now, which is perhaps the most important voice to bring into this thing. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So the media meltdown that has ensued as a result of this vote, uh, predictable? Well, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what they do. But you know what I love? I love the fact that Republicans stood up. They didn't go cold. They stood bold and stood toe to toe with these here people. Listen, we cannot make accusations and allegations against someone without evidence. You have to have evidence. Brett Kavanaugh, I stood with him. He pulled me in with his story. It was compelling. That's and I right. believed him. Do I believe Dr. Ford? Something happened, but it wasn't with Brett Kavanaugh. No, it wasn't. We need to go ahead and confirm him today. That's right. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be a big day. So when Donald Trump was elected, I kept telling my husband, uh, you know, I think the most important thing about Donald Trump's election is he is going to teach Republicans how to fight. That's right. Yes. When you write, you fight. That's right. You have right. to understand that. And I'm not talking about fist fighting, but you have to fight them with the facts. Hold up, Jack. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's right. And don't hold nothing back. That's so right. you really do have to do that. You're right. Because you're it's totally always right. been a culture where you're racist, you're this, you that, and then Republicans fold. Well, yes. see, we're the new Republicans. That's we're right. the Trump Republicans. Trump Republicans. And we don't baby. fold, baby. We know how to fight well, dirty. You want to fight, we're going to show you how Let's it's done. Let me just you because when Senator Collins, which is an unlikely, as Rachel was pointing out, unlikely senator to really finally stare down this angry mob and say, this is larger than this one political fight. This is about fairness mm -hmm. uh, of this man. Do you believe that this is going to be the mantra for Republicans going forward? It should be. It has to be. That's right. It you know, if, if not, it's time for us to take our country back. For so long, we've allowed Democrats, we've allowed liberals to control the narrative and the process. We have to man up and stand up and stop allowing these people to take and dismantle this country. And shout when people you, down with racist, sexist, right. homophobic. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. This is what happens when you man up or stand up. This is what the Women's March tweeted yesterday about who Senator Collins is. So she stood on the floor for 43 minutes and made a very powerful a reasoned speech, and they said Senator Collins is a rape apologist. That that's how they view someone who was very respectful in her remarks. Can you is anything ever good enough for the left unless they? Win? Oh, it's nothing ever good enough mm -hmm. for them. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So what we have to do, we ignore them. And what we need to do while they're forming their protests in the street, we need to form a protest and go to the polls and protest and vote some of these mm -hmm. people out yes. and vote for Republicans. Today is Kavanaugh. Tomorrow it could be your brother, your husband, your father or your son. Uh -huh. I don't like what I just saw here. That's Anybody right. can be accused of something. And even if they're trying to defend themselves, you still want to make right. them wrong. And that's not right. So, so what do you think this does to the midterms? Oh, listen, I think you're going to see a red tsunami. Listen, right. people are going, do you have <laughs> red, red tsunami? Red red tsunami. But, but you have Democrats that's upset about what just happened yeah. to this man. And, right. it, and if you are a minority, and I hate calling us minorities because we're part of the majority because we're Americans. That's but right. if you are bl but, but if you're black that. in this country, you should be standing with Kavanaugh. You know how it feels to be the left. You tell us you want to impeach 45, but we go in your district and it's run down, That's it's right. homelessness, or we have a problem with How that. How do we go see it? Okay, go to dummycrestthemovie.com, click on get your tickets, and it'll tell you what location is playing. In That's your area, right. it's in theaters nationwide. It's, you're going to places the Democrats have long uh, been in is charge. Yes, pointing yes. out that their policies don't work. Yes, baby, yes. and we're giving you proof with truth. I That's mean, right. we, 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 we got we're our We're giving facts. it to you straight from, from the gate, That's baby. That's right. That's right. Dummy crash. Well, I dummy crash. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, you ladies, we always love having you on this couch. Oh, thank you so oh, much. thank you for so joining much. us we this love morning. You. Thank you. Come more often. We, we will. certainly will. Yeah. Yeah. We like you in person over the satellites. All right. right. Like <laughs> and it's dummycratsthemovie.com. Dummycratsthemovie.com. Check it out. Thank you, ladies. Well, we're going to turn to some headlines right now. An illegal immigrant deported once before is accused of killing five Americans after mistakenly rele being released.
from jail. Immigration officials say Pablo Serrano de Torino re-entered the country in 2015. An ICE detainer was apparently issued at the wrong sheriff's office, freeing the Mexico native from local authorities. Police believe he then went on a deadly multi-state shooting spree in Kansas and Missouri. He's awaiting trial. And an anti-Trump professor is no longer teaching at Georgetown University after some major backlash. The move comes after Fair posted this tweet saying Republican senators who support Judge Kavanaugh, quote, deserve miserable deaths. The school claiming Christine Fair will be traveling internationally for research for the university. They previously supported Fair, but said the decision was necessary to protect the Georgetown community. Deaths while feminists laugh at them. Right. Yeah. Good. Great. Liberal New York City Mayor, I love your commentary. Sorry. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> uh, Liberal uh, Mayor Vlad de Blasio is caught um, blowing off a homeless activist who interrupts his workout. Take a look. That activist demanding that de Blasio create more affordable housing for homeless people like her. For example, apartments available through the city's affordable housing program require applicants earn nearly $200,000 a year. And a Senate run could be in Sarah Palin's future. The former Alaska governor tweeting, quote, hey, Lisa Murkowski, I can see 2020 from my house. Palin appearing to challenge incumbent Senator Murkowski <laughs> after she voted no on a measure to end debate on Judge Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination. The Alaska Republican is up for re-election after her term ends in 2023. And those are your headlines. Yeah, I mean, what do you think not, about a senator? You know Palin? where that comes from. Like, I can see Russia from my house, but we're not talking that much about Russia anymore. No. Well, Rick is. <laughs> Rick. Yeah. No, he's actually not. Ever. You should do the weather from Russia sometime. That would be cold great. in I, It is very, very cold. Or Alaska. It's, it's Alaska is one of two states I've never been to. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. What's the other yeah, one? That's... Montana. Oh, you got it. Yeah, go I know. Two, I have two amazing states waiting. Yeah. So we should just find some stories. Knock it out. Hey, Pete, in local weather, we talk about, hey, can, where is the cold front? Can you spot the cold front? I yeah. know you want to be a weatherman. I can where, see it right where, there. Can, can you right see across the, the central front? plains, Rick. You can see the cold front from Boom. the Kirby couch. Yes. That's yeah. my Sarah Palin <laughs> reference. There. Yeah, it's right here. That was good, right? There you go. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a cold front. Behind that is a colder air. We're going to be stuck in this pattern for a while where it's kind of below average out west and well above average. Still feels very much like summer across a lot of the east. When you look at the radar picture, you can exactly see the same thing. We've got all of this moisture here from parts of west Texas, all across parts of the plains. And because of this, uh, even though Rachel doesn't remember this, Wisconsin is incredibly wet and they've had an incredibly wet summer. And they have a lot more rain coming here. It's going to cause some more localized flooding. Take a look at what happens throughout the weekend by tomorrow. A bunch of spots here that are going to be seeing over four to six inches of rain and on already wet soil. That causes for some flooding. Rachel, sorry are, to throw you Are we out of the back. hurricanes? No, we're not. In fact, we have have a little bit of tropical stuff we're going to watch across parts okay. of the central gulf uh, later Rick, on i can't week. know what the weather in wisconsin is when i'm in new york you are there five days a week i know <laughs> you have rig to give it to you. All thanks, right. thanks right all right if kevin is voted through today as expected what does it mean for the presumption of innocence tom fitton joins us next he's going to weigh in plus some people are already calling to replace senator susan collins after her yes vote on kavanaugh one of the people answering that call on twitter Susan Rice? Hmm. Is she from me?
We are back. Well, the Senate set to vote on Judge Kavanaugh's confirmation today. And if confirmed, it could be a big day for the rule of law and the presumption of innocence in America. Here to explain, President of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. So, Tom, vote expected will happen later on today. And Judge Kavanaugh will likely be the next associate Supreme Court justice. But you say the big winner is the rule of law. Why? It is, but just barely because, you know, the rule of law is designed to protect uh, the operations of the Senate to make sure that they're not hijacked. They're designed to protect innocent Americans who are brought before the Senate uh, for confirmation, such as Judge Kavanaugh. And what the left tried to do was really overturn the Senate. What the left tried to do was overturn the basic presumptions that we have as a country, as a constitutional system, <clears throat> that you're innocent until proven guilty. Uh, you know, thankfully, by one or two votes, all those principles will be up upheld. But by gosh, they took a body blow. Well, what happens uh, when you overturn those presumptions? Well, you blow up the Senate, you blow up our constitutional system, and you tell American citizens that, look, we're going to let senators in this case, you know, before it was IRS agents or FBI agents, but this week it's senators, abuse their offices to target you over politics. And it will be no holds barred. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a feeling as long as conservatives are being put before the Senate, the left now has a pattern they can follow, which is to raise allegations without sure. evidence and use their allies in the Senate to try to destroy you and your family. Now, leftists will have no problem. Uh, but the liberal media, the organized left on the outside, yep. the uh, organized left in the Senate, uh, they don't believe in this constitutional system that we've all followed for 200 plus years. Well, one of the president's sons, Donald Trump Jr., tweeted this uh, just yesterday. Trump supporters, the fight isn't over. You better believe that Democrats are going to do everything in their power to impeach Kavanaugh from the Supreme Court if they take control of Congress in November. This is war. Time to fight. Vote on November 6th to protect the Supreme Court. Uh, do you believe this is a real possibility should the Democrats take either either um, house? Yeah, I don't think they'll necessarily get anywhere with impeachment against Kavanaugh, but that's not the point. The point is the process, having it hang over his head while he conducts the business of the Supreme Court. So in addition to trying to destroy the Senate, they're going to try to destroy the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, when, when you're up for when you're when you've got this fixation on power, uh, they don't care. It's all about power and they'll destroy institutions that protect the republic uh, to do it. It's a disconcerting Terrible yeah. two weeks for the Republic, Pete. I really, I'm really upset No, I agree about with it. you. Uh, Tom, we've only got about 15 seconds here. Briefly, one of the nice, one of the upside silver linings of this process that we haven't had to hear about Russia and Bob Mueller. Are we going to start hearing about it again now? Oh, yeah, we'll hear about it on Monday. Oh, they, <laughs> they were abusing the FBI and DOJ to target Trump. Then he abused the Senate and the FBI to target Kavanaugh. And we'll come back around again to go after Trump. So you it's whatever you. the most convenient vehicle of the moment is. Tom Fitton, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Well, former Obama advisor Susan Rice answering the call to challenge Susan Collins over her support of Judge Kavanaugh. Benghazi, anyone? Our next guest says the culture of retribution has the Demo by the Democrats. It's got to stop. Plus, we've got on this program Mercedes Schlapp, Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy, Greg Jarrett, and Candace Owens all here live on this program coming up.
since those who have known him best have attested. He has been an exemplary public servant, judge, teacher, coach, husband, and father. Mr. President, I will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. After Senator Collins took a stand on the Senate floor, people on social media attacked her, asking who would run to unseat her. So who answered the call? Well, none other than former Obama National Security Advisor Susan Wright, who tweeted, me. And after the outpouring <laughs> of support from, the, from Twitter, she further stoked anticipation, saying, many thanks for the encouragement. I'm not making any announcements. Like so many Americans, I'm deeply disappointed in Senator Collins' vote for Kavanaugh. Maine and America deserve better. So here to react, former Apprentice contestant and Trump supporter Aaron Elmore. Good morning, Aaron. How are you? Great. How are you? So what do you make of the possibility of a potential senator, Susan Rice? First of all, what are her ties to Maine? I would love to know. Is she feeling like she's slipping into a little bit of irrelevancy here? And you know what's so interesting about the Democrats is their politics of retribution, right? Merrick Garland, that's why Judge Kavanaugh was treated so poorly. Now we're treating her poorly and saying, oh, Susan Rice should have this seat. Aren't the Democrats the one that want to support women and bring women up? No, not now. Only when it's convenient for them. Isn't that interesting? They want women to have a voice. They want women to have an opinion. No, no, no. Only when it's convenient for them. So you've been pretty vocal that you don't think that Dr. Ford's story really added up. And you think that there's going to be more that comes out um, that maybe uh, adds to your theory on her story. You know, personally, I always feel terrible for victims of any sort of trauma, and, and the Me Too movement is a huge thing. But in this instance, the problem, and I'm also an attorney, by the way, the evidentiary part here is really big, okay? We're missing a lot of evidence, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of things that go to her credibility as a witness. So if we were in a court of law, First of all, there's no statute of limitations, you know, that's way blown. So there really isn't any crime that could even be brought right now but having said all of that from an evidentiary perspective she's really lacking a whole lot let me ask you here, though you mentioned being a lawyer and and you're right when i talked to those protesters they said well you know the presumption of innocence on brett kavanaugh's part this isn't a court trial he's in for a job interview that was their uh point but Senator Collins said, no, this is about presumption of innocence, and this is the very reason why that I'm going to vote yes. What do you make about what this process has done to the due process of every future nominee to any high office? That's why I thought that it was so important that Judge Kavanaugh was confirmed, because if not, this is the new standard by which we live, that any man at any place or any time can be told to confirm Brett Kavanaugh as Supreme Court Justice. We've got Mercedes Schlepp, Tammy Bruce, Candace Owen. They all are here live coming up. Grab your coffee and stay with us.